Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has been successful in the last few weeks in busting cross-border crime rings. Last week, NDLEA officials arrested a fake security agent with 280 kilograms of assorted drugs in Kebi State. The suspect allegedly specializes in trafficking illicit drugs from Benin Republic through Lagos. This, of course, follows similar arrests of two people with 1,330 kilograms of banned substances in Edo State and another arrest of the most wanted drug baron in Nasarawa State. And just last month, NDLEA operatives arrested another suspect with two billion naira worth of illicit drugs at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport. The spokesman of the NDLEA, Femi Babafemi, is joining us this morning. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us, sir. It's my pleasure. Good yes, morning. Good morning. All right. I want to start by asking if, you know, from the news that we're reading about drug busts across the country, is it that there is more drug trafficking currently going on in the last few years or is the NDLEA becoming more effective? Yeah, basically, I think um, the logic behind the whole thing is the idea of um, the new maxim in the agency, which is offensive action. Um, I can tell you that if you know um, General Buba Marwa, uh, when he was the military administrator in Lagos State, you will recall um, the great uh, feats by Operation Sweep, um, the security outfit which he empowered and uh, coordinated himself. So he's bringing the same um, experience and impetus into, into the NDLA at the moment. And that's why um, I can tell you from the very first day he resumed as the chairmanship executive of the NDLA, that's precisely January 18, 2020, 20, I mean, this year, um, he did gather all the commanders and top um, officers of the agency and told them that um, it's no longer going to be a dull moment. It's, um, it's going to be offensive action all the way. And that's exactly what, um, what we are having at the moment. That's the impact of what we're having at the moment. Unfortunately, um, the men and officers of the agency believe strongly in his leadership and they are following up with his um, directive on that. So, Again, when you also look at um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, as a result of which borders were closed globally, uh, and um, following which the borders were relaxed or opened up um, towards the end of last year, stroke early this year, that has also affected the search, those that had not been able to traffic their illicit substances for almost a year, then they felt it was time to resume. But unfortunately, uh, uh, they are resuming their illicit trade at the wrong, wrong, wrong time mm. when there is a new sheriff in town at the NDLA. So that's why at the moment they are having, um, they are having it tough with the agency. They have to contend with the agency, whether at the, at the ports, at the airports, at the seaports, at the land borders. So that's the result, the effect of what you are seeing. We're actually putting the heat on them and um, trying to drive them out of the business. All right, Mr. Baba Fami, could you give us more details on you know, the arrest of the suspected drug traffickers, both in Kebi and Niger State? And has it been confirmed that one of those traffickers you know, is indeed a law enforcement officer in Sokoto State? Yeah, um, where he claimed to be to belong to a law enforcement agency, um, and um, he claimed to be working at the Shokoto State Command of the agency, but because uh, we need to verify all that through the agency, so that's why for now we are suspecting him to be a fake security officer. It's actually not just an ordinary agent; he's an officer. He's of the officer's rank. And um, he claimed um, the one for which he was arrested um, uh, last week was his fourth time of uh, moving drugs from, um, from Benin Republic to the north. Um, and he was getting paid for that by a wanted um, notorious drug dealer in that assist. So 
but we're verifying, we're trying to contact um, his, um, I, I mean, his secure, the security agencies, he, I mean, uh, the security agency he claims he belongs to. So that's why at the moment we are still suspecting him to be fake. Hmm. But if, if this checks out, you know, right, it would definitely, you know, seem to, to give credence to reports we've heard about law enforcement agencies and even members of the NDLA breaking the law that they were, you know, appointed to basically, you know, check, isn't it? Yeah, you see, that's why I told you, I said, for now, uh, you know, people, for somebody that has been moving drugs through the borders, he would have been using that claim to pass through a lot of security checks. But unfortunately, um, this time around when he met our officers, that was in the night, uh, at about 8.30 p.m. Uh, at a checkpoint in Kirby State. He was actually crossing to, to Shokuto State on his way to Shokuto State. And he did offer them bribe, but they rejected and insisted on searching. And by the time they searched him, they discovered that his own personal um, vehicle, that four seats you are seeing in the picture there, um, it was discovered that with tinted glasses, he stopped and concealed the drugs inside um, every available space in that vehicle. And so uh, it is claim for now that he belongs to a security agency. We are investigating that, and when that is confirmed, uh, there is a procedure for that so that um, the appropriate um, security agency where he claims he belongs will know um, he will be handed over to them for first of all, in house um, uh, trial or so to say, then he would not have to be handed over to the NGLA to face um, prosecution. All right. Okay. I, then I, I, um, when you talk of, for, for, for every agency, definitely I would deny there will always be some uh, bad, bad eggs. eggs that you cannot rule out. But then uh, what is important is when they are caught, what do you do with them? As far as we are concerned, there is no sacred cow. There is nobody that is above the law. Whether you are in NDLA or you are in any other law enforcement agency, the moment you are caught, you go in for it. All right. That's what is. I, I want us to case. not just in this case, some quite some other cases that we had. Right. Mr. Baba Femi. in recent times. Yeah, I, I, yes, I want please. us to also, you know, uh, talk about the uh, 1,330 kilograms of uh, suspected. A cannabis that was seized in Edo State is a staggering figure. Um, I want you to shed more light on that. Um, was that meant to be trafficked outside Nigeria? We, you know, where, where was that found? And what are the other connecting factors that, uh, you know, the, that the Nigerians need to be aware of here? Um, are there drug routes, you know, in Edo State and in the South-South that um, have become a problem? Um, we don't want to stigmatize any particular state. Um, I can tell you that um, the drug, the cannabis sativa, seized 1,330 kg kilograms seized in Edo State. Um, that is the, fr the Easter Friday. Um, yes. Was actually meant for another market. It was actually, you know, these people, <laughs> they had to package it for Easter sales. The same thing we got um, uh, one of the most wanted drug barons that had been operating in Nasarawa State for years. Um, just that same day, Easter Friday, we also got him in um, in uh, Nasarawa, Lafia, and uh, his warehouse filled with um, bags of illicit substances busted. We we have taken that. We've taken him. It was actually um, not a good Friday for them because um, they were actually preparing their illicit um, consignment to distribute for Easter sales. But then um, we denied them that opportunity. And uh, again, like I said, um, it's not about any particular state. You just discover that certain communities um, Can you, can you give examples? This, and this is not about stigmatization now. It's about the truth. You know, what regions are the most, pro pro yeah. most problematic? Yeah, when you're talking of uh, particular states in terms of cultivation of um, this particular um, drug, that is cannabis, whatever, you're talking of Edo, you're talking of Delta. 
But I can tell you that the moment, um, just last week, we are, the thing is moving south to the north already. Last week, we destroyed um, hectares of uh, cannabis um, farm in Kano. That is strange. Oh, wow. That is totally strange. It wasn't like that before. It used to be something planted in the south and transported, harvested, and transported to the north. But now we're having it planted in the north. So that's why we have to go all out to make sure that um, we deny them that opportunity to continue the the cultivation and processing of um, of um, of this illicit um, drug. And beyond that, um, we're not just limiting it. It's not something um, that is that is just one particular session. Like I told you, now that we are discovering it in the, in, in Kano, that people have started planting it. So we have to um, broaden uh, our search and our okay. operations to be sure that um, where we believe these things were not being planted before. Um, now, since it's obvious that they are not planting them there, so we have to go all out for them as well. All right, Mr. Femi, Baba Femi spokesman, the NDLEA, thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast this morning. It's my pleasure being with you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Right. So, That's sorry, I never knew that uh, there were we Easter sales, use it. bonanzas. And those state for... people don't use Yeah, we're both from Edo State, but we have to understand. See, we don't do that. We're only him. just oh, sorry, moving it to the people who need oh, sorry, it. Oh, I just remembered lots, lot of of lots of guys, lots of bad guys then that would tell me that they have farms. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could this be what they were planting? We don't for use Easter sales? stuff like that in Edo State. Oh, my God. It's a town filled with born-again young men and I women. I feel really that prosecution should be paramount. When everybody sees, you know, your gang member, in prison, you know, arrested, you would definitely desist and find other means of livelihood. Yeah, so and yeah. it's one of the things that I we I didn't get to ask him. You know, if if our penal uh, the penalties and the laws concerning drug use, not just releasing them on in bail. Nigeria, um, if they are strong enough to actually make people desist, even if yes, you know, there are still people who go to countries, um, you know, across the world that have the death penalty. You still people, you still people go there with you know and traffic drugs, um, but at the same time also. To quickly note, before we go, there is a larger conversation these days online about decriminalizing drug usage and you know, the use of marijuana and cannabis in Nigeria. I've seen a lot of the responses to that 1,300 kilograms in those state. A lot of them, a good 60% of them are saying decriminalize drugs. I don't think that would prove for in this country. Not at this cannabis. time, anyway. I don't, I don't think not. so. All right. I don't think so. Sports coming up next. Wally Scott is going to be joining us to quickly share with us uh, quick updates on uh, certain sports topics. We'll be back.